I said, young ladies and folks, we got another man that you, you he, yeah, he doesn't need, he doesn't need, but yes, he does need because of the accolades. He was at ACN when I came over ACN, wow, 16, 17 years ago. He was, he was cutting up then. He's probably got the largest organization in Northern California and Europe. He overrides some of the superstars. The list go on and on and on and on and on. We'd be here for another 15, 20 minutes to do that. He has one of the best promotions I've ever seen. Martin Ceruto was number two in my book, and Wendy was the number three. But this gentleman hits number one. I've never seen anything like it in my life. When the co-founder's mouth hit the stage and eyes bugging out their head and Mr. Martin Sapp saying, oh, my God, not an eye in the house was dry. He sat next to Mr. Uh, his, what his mentor, his father, he calls him, uh, Les Brown, who had a birthday last Wednesday, was 76 years old. See, leaders keep up with other leaders because of the respect that's due. This young man has just done a fabulous job, not only ACM, but in business. He's a coach. He's a life coach. He's uh, also in the health. I mean, he's just all around. I mean, just, I, I don't know where he finds the time. I think God gave him extra five hours every day more than the rest of us. Did. Without further ado, my dear friend, regional uh, senior vice president from the L.A. area, the great, the one and only, Mr. Byron Nelson. Can we give a hand? Morpheus. <laughs> Good morning. Oh, How are I you? I love sir? it. I love that shirt. I love that sweater. Uh, it's the King Dog. <laughs> <I> love... <laughs> well deserved. Well deserved. Uh, uh, <laughs> it's colorful. It keeps me warm. It's been my latest fetish. Let's see here. One and two. How are you doing today, sir? What's going on? Man, I'm doing fine as frog hair split five ways and sandpaper. If you can break that down, think about it like that's real fine. <laughs> every, day above ground. Every, every day above ground is a blessing, my friend. God bless you. Thank you so much for taking time to be with us today. We appreciate you and everything you say to us because we hang on to everywhere, bated breath. I got all the notes you ever spoke on. And we were trying to surprise you last week and we played the whole entire Morning of training in April 2017, the most magnificent conversation at SVP. I loved it. Go ahead, sir. I love it. I love it. Well, good morning, family. I could talk about Mr. Al Thomas for the next 12 months and not miss a breath or say the same thing twice because he is that fine. He is that good and he is that great. Um, and I'm just honored to be on the call. So we're going to jump right in. Look at that smile, Samuel. Boy, I'm going to steal that smile and sell it. I won't have to get another customer in my life. So what we <laughs> so what we're gonna do is jump right in. I wanna um, there's a there's something I've, I have a uh, for the month of March. What me and my team have done um, of my projects of, of that I'm putting hands on. It's really more of as we talked about last week. It's peeling back the onion and understanding why you were called to be great. It really comes down to your anointing, right? You know. As my girl says, it's about being chosen, but you have to choose yourself. So I want to um, start with this. If uh, Jeffrey would actually give me control, I want to show a video real quick. And I want you guys, and, and I'm going somewhere with this video. So I want you guys to really pay attention to each person that's speaking in it for, and it's worth taking a five minutes of my time to lay the foundation for what I want you guys to get this morning. So we'll go here. Actually, no, I'm going to go back here because I want to make sure it's going through your speakers. Let's go here, 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 and here. Before I even push play, I want you to write that down. Be not afraid of greatness. Some are born great, some achieve greatness, and others have greatness thrust upon them. You got to figure out which of those categories you choose. And that goes all the way back to William Shakespeare. You know, some are born great, some achieve greatness, and others have greatness thrust upon them. I don't think, uh, you know, I, I think when it comes down to it, in fact, I know what I do know, here's what I do know. Everybody has greatness in them. However you actualize it, however you manifest it, however you bring it to the forefront, I just think there's a, just a very few people who are willing to pay the sacrifice to tap into that greatness. But I believe everyone has greatness in them, otherwise you wouldn't be here. You've already overcome all the odds you need to you know, overcome. So I want you to listen to this right here before I get into my piece, which is gonna really allow me to tap into, as Mr. Al Thomas says, peeling back the onion. Are you the best footballer in the world right now? I think so, yes. In my mind, I'm always the best. I don't care what the people are thinking, what they say. In my mind, 
not just this year, but always, I'm always the best. I'm always going to say that. I knew, I knew, I knew what was going to happen. I knew I was going to get here. They didn't. There's a lot of stressful years. You know what I mean? A lot of tough times. Um, but I proved them wrong. I proved myself right. I proved myself right. You need to bet on your strengths and don't give a f about what you suck at. If you want this, if you want bling bling, if you want to buy the jets, if you want to do sh work. When I look around, I always learn something, and that is to be always yourself and to express yourself, to have faith in yourself. Do not go out and look for a successful personality and duplicate him. I feel I still have room to improve. I still set goals for myself to strive for. Uh, I'm never complacent with what I've achieved. Uh, even though it's been very successful for me, I still feel I have a lot to prove. Ben Graham in his, low, in his low teens looked around and he looked at the people he admired and he said, you know, I want to be admired, so why don't I just behave like them? And he found there was nothing impossible about behaving like them. If you're doing anything interesting in the world, you're going to have critics. The only way, if you absolutely can't tolerate critics, then don't do anything new or interesting. I would just say, go stand on a street corner and watch in a crowded urban area and watch all the people walk by and think about what they're thinking about. I bet you none of those people are thinking about you. After years of repetitive work, you will often need to dig hard to find your passions, redefine your dreams, and revive hobbies that you let atrophy to near extinction. You think someone's gonna come to you and give you uh, a highlighted version script on how to live your life? And if that was the case, would you even go that way? How boring is that? It's the unknown about to be that gets me up in the morning. But it's always a challenge. And as soon as a challenge is lost, guys, your will is dead. There's no reason to get up in the morning. There are a million reasons why not, but there's one great reason why. Because before it was luck, it was a belief. And every day with no one watching at five in the morning by myself, I trained it because I believed in it. Then I mastered it. No, I remastered and remastered in hopes that one day my trained ability collided with an opportunity to show it off. That's what luck is. That's what success is. Start to finish a blueprint that every single module inside of it you create, you own. Nothing subjective in there. It's all you. You don't just live in life. You change it. You shape it. You make your mark upon it. Strive to find your own voice. Because the longer you wait to begin, the less likely you are to find it at all. Thoreau said most men lead lives of quiet desperation. Don't be resigned to that. Break out. It's not about being rational. It's about following your heart. You must be imaginative, strong-hearted. You must try things that may not work. And you must not let anyone define your limits because of where you come from. Open it up, actually, and I'd love to hear your takeaways from that. Anybody's takeaway? 
Uh, hey, Mr. Nelson. Hey, what's going on? What's happening, fam? I, I, the, a big one in the beginning was if you can't take, uh, if you can't tolerate the critics, don't do anything new or interesting, uh, Jeff Bezos. And I thought that was so important because in network marketing, we know we can hear things all the time, but the reality is if you're gonna do anything special, you will, and you gotta push that aside and do it anyway. Awesome, love that. Anybody else? Did you get anything? Please, Kenny, go ahead. You know how to unmute? You know Change how to unmute? requires action. You can't unmute, Kenny? You can't unmute, Kenny? Can you hear me now? Oh, now oh, I can. Now I, I, I love the part where, and I don't know who the gentleman was, he said, I knew I was great at, before he got there. I, exactly. I always knew I'd be here. There you go. You thought about it first. Excellent. From that wonderful book that you uh, suggest I read. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Take two more. Talk to me. Ms. Nelson, I, uh, what resonated with me was definitely the finding your voice part. I think that's what network marketing has done for me and it has done for me and just how to be a business, how to, how to uh, uh, build the business and build the business. So, uh, so build the business. Voice so, uh, Awesome. Awesome. I don't know where the feedback is coming from. I don't know where the feedback is coming from. Anyway. Um, anyway. We have Edmund. You want to say something? You can unmute yourself until we meet everybody again. Beautiful morning. Excellent. Look at the crowd beneath you. And I bet you're all thinking one thing, not about you. <laughs> True that. Okay. Dave? Great morning, sir. Um, my takeaway is success has no room for complacency, and success will always have opposition to get to the top of your journey. Beautiful. So we spoke about, thank you so much. You can meet him, um, Jay. Uh, we spoke about last Friday, really knowing yourself before you can move into the next level, but moving into the next level really comes down to peeling back the onion of knowing who you are. Knowing who you are, you can go and prepare, you can plan, you can have all kinds of access, but what are you doing on a daily basis? Let's say that again. I'll say things I want you to retain twice because I know I talk fast. What am I doing on a daily basis? What am I doing on a daily basis? It doesn't matter if you're working five minutes a day or five hours a day. Once I understand that I'm working, first of all, that eliminates about 85% of the crowd of people working. <laughs> so, you know, because most people are living inside their head, right? Now, living inside your head, how do I get outside of my head is what are you feeding yourself? I don't start a day without, and it, and, and it took me a minute to get back into this. It really it didn't start until couple of months ago, and I just implemented it within a handful of people that I'm working with directly, you can almost get to a point of resisting motivation or conversations or um, these type of uh, blips that I'm sharing. Would everybody agree with that? Are you follow me on that? It's like, I don't need any more motivation. I just need to plan. I just need to know what I'm doing. I need to know how I'm going to do it. All these different conversations in your head that you start to resist from listening to uh, inspiration or motivational conversations. But you'll find the further you get from the ebb and flow of that river of those motivational conversations, the more you get into how do our sur a survival mode. I'm going to say that again. The further you get from waking up every morning, if you don't have somebody that's holding you accountable, that's calling you every day, letting you know, hey, I'm great. Hey, you know, I can do it. Hey, this is gonna be the most amazing day of your life. Hey, miracles are gonna happen. If some, I don't know what's gonna to happen today, but something miraculous is gonna happen in my life today. I'm going to find three extraordinary people to come on my team today. I'm going to get five customers today. Doesn't matter if you ended up going after five and you got two, or if you go after five and you ended up with 10, that you have a set goal every day that you're gonna have. If you don't have that conversation, that real playing in your day, 
you get caught up in conversations of just how am I going to get through today? Where do I start? Where am I going to get my customers? Where am I going to get my prospects? Okay, let me plug into another call. You get into a, a, a unconsciously, I want you to understand this. You unconsciously get into a victim role and don't even know you're playing victim. You're just going through the motions. Your, ET, ET, your ETL position is not moving any closer to RD. Your RD position becomes a permanent position. You aren't any closer to RVP. The RVP goes into, you know, okay, well, this year I'm going to get it instead of this national in March, I'm going to get it. The RD, you know, I, I, I was only 100 points away, 100 points away, 150 points away, which is literally seven. You did not strategize. If, if you're 150 points away from RD, just say, let's just say hypothetically, that's really only about 15 customers with the point system that we have today. 20 services is 150 to 200 points. That means that you could have strategized and still can and had a goal, a specific goal of 200 points a month, set a goal of 20 services that would maximize the point system and hit RD or help someone hit RD in three months. Now, 600 points seems overwhelming. It can, not to me, I mean, because our, our point system was different, but 600 points, like, oh, I gotta get 600 points. 300 points can seem, oh, I gotta get 300 points. But three months doesn't seem overwhelming to me. I can count three months. I can count three months of inundated work consumed work, obsessed work, and complete anything that I want. Accumulating $30,000 can seem overwhelming. But I can count three months. 10,000 a month does not seem overwhelming to me. And if it took me double the time and I did it in six months, who's upset within six months having put $30,000 in your pocket on this thing part-time? So instead of 10, you made five. But because you didn't get to the core of who you are as a human being, you didn't become a law of attraction to attract people to be able to build you up. This happens within your spirituality. This happens within your health. This happens within your mentality. This happens within your body. Everything, I mean, physically, I've fallen off a thousand times. I always bounce back. I don't stop going to the gym. I rearrange what I'm doing in the gym. I don't stop reading. I find something else that's going to stimulate my mind that's going to reach, get me back on the right track. I don't give up on my goals as far as the people that I'm going to help create greatness. I retrace who I'm working with, where they are, where I am, who's aligned with going where I want to go. Who are you taking with you? Because if you're pouring on a plant that's not growing, I mean... Everybody goes hungry. <laughs> That's just your fault. So do I give up on that plant? No, but I plant another seed. Because it goes back to it's easier to give birth than to raise the dead. Is this resonating? Is anybody understanding this conversation? The reason why it's so important is because as I, as I look at it, like I said, three minutes, I was talking to my team yesterday and I talked to them the day before. My team, I talk to every single day. And it's every day I know that something's gonna happen. I mean, I wish I could open up the thread, but then I, you know, I, I give up, open up personal. When I look at what, what I started to be able to launch this month and the team that I'm working with and what I did to lay a foundation and feel like what my team does, I do. So now I have to insert myself because we become one body. So collectively, I know with just a handful of people, I've made over 55, 56 contacts yesterday. That means I'm watering the right seeds. That they've reached 56 people amongst less than five to six people. Because they're doing what I asked to do from day one. Now it's a matter of following up with them. What are you doing with the people? First of all, you got to first know who you are and what you're doing before you can do that. But 
it comes down to being a collision of success. Why should somebody invest in you? Better stated, as I asked my team yesterday, why should I do business with you? And if anybody like to, I mean, jump in the water of not my projects, but anybody else, you know, whether it's Patron or Don or Marie or Neha or Ishmael, why should any one of you, Tosh, anybody want to get in the water? Heather, why should I get into business with you? Anybody, you can open up your screen. I would love for one or two or three of you guys to answer that. Why? Anybody want to tell me? Nobody wants to get in the water? 80 plus people on the call. Nobody wants to get trained today. Okay. I mean, we can end early. <laughs> Oh, you can't unmute. Jay, unmute. I'm so um, allow them to unmute. I'm sorry. Here, I'll do it. Forgot I have controls. Go ahead. Unmute yourself. Um, sorry, you go you go ahead. One at a time. Go ahead. Neha, go ahead. So for me, um, I just know somewhere deep inside that I'm meant for greatness. And I know that you have it in you. You have already been in the water for so many years. You know the game. And I want the right coaching to be able to get to it. Pause right there. I, I just went through this. It's going to be beautiful. So mute yourself. Somebody else jump in the water. Why should I do business with you? Because oh, I have no, into no, a no. business, Marie. One at a time. Talk to me. Uh, strong work ethics. Strong work ethics. Hi, this is Marie. Okay. Um, people go with um, joined my business because um, of my integrity, and they are my friends, and I want them to win. And I follow the system, and I have a good mentor and a soloist. I'll take two more and then I'll coach on it. Go ahead. Mm. You, you need yeah. Rob, you want to go? Yeah. Yeah. What I take from this is I'm going to start from 30 days from today. No, 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 no. Not what you take from it. I said, why should I get into your business? Oh, I should get in my business? Because after we have a conversation, I don't know how to say this. <laughs> no worries. Claudine, go ahead. Mute yourself, Rob. Yep. Claudine, you want to speak up? You just letting us hear your GPS, Claudine. Talk to me. <laughs> okay. She just wanted us to know where she was going. Anybody else want to jump in the water? Mr. Nelson? Yes, please. Oh, hi. So, okay. So I just want to take one minute to help, help uh, you understand that. I've, I've been in this for a minute now, and what, what I've learned from it is a whole self-development thing. And why I want you to be in my business, because I understand something about okay, so being- So pause right there, pause right there. So okay. I'm gonna share with you, this happened, this just happened with my team. My leaders will tell you what just happened. Cause we just went over this like the last 48 hours of the projects that I'm working with. You guys getting this way, am I? Everybody's, it's the same duplication. Everybody's starting off with I. I said, why? I'm a prospect. I, this isn't hypothetical. I want to know why I should get into your business. And all you're telling me about is, well, I and me and what and where. You have not given me, and I just played an entire thing. You know why you should get in my business? Because I'm the greatest at what I do. But if I say I'm the greatest at what I do, the only thing that I do is help you become greater than me. You never incorporate a conversation of we. Everything has been within an I, a me, and a separation of you and what's there for you. You haven't constructed your conversation. You haven't developed a conversation. You aren't instilling any confidence in me as to why I should get in your business. The best you're trying to do is give me the benefits of a system, a product, a service, a company, and I, what you're doing in a business. And when I finish hearing your conversation, my conversation in my head is, this is going to be great for you. It's not my cup of tea. I hope you do well. Let me know if I can support you. And that's what 90% of you get all the time. Send me some more information. 
This is good for you. It sounds interesting because you have never once, and I could go through everybody on the call and I promise you I get the same answer because I just did this as a training with my projects and reprogramming their brain. And that is to be able to give me the reason. I promise you if I ask Mr. Al Thomas, why I should work with him is like, because you aren't gonna get anybody else that's gonna support you the way I'm gonna support you in getting to your dreams. It was never about me. You never made it about me. You, you aren't doing anything to serve me. And in that, guess what happens? Write this down. The way you do anything is the way you do everything. So guess what happens? Even if you get somebody in your business, guess what the conversation is still about? What they should do and what you're doing. It's never, it's, you're not incorporating a, an empowering conversation. You're not empowering me. You aren't making me feel comfortable like I can go out there and do something. See, me being the greatest in this business, one of the greatest dynamics I love about this industry is that the only way that we can win is to help somebody else win. And until you learn how to have a we conversation, a dynamic team, a, a, a wrecking ball, a squad that's going to go out there, with every person you're talking about, it's like, look, I, we just, we have a young man by the name of Cameron coming on our team right now. And everything has been about what I see in you, your discipline, your youth. Let me feed you. I'm not even letting you get in. Let me give you the next two days. We're going to go on a 45 day run. It's all been about a preparation of a mindset of guess what I'm going to do. It, it, it was about me first. So we got on the call. We did it in Roman conversation. He loved it. I sent him some information through, through Maya. He loved it. We got back on to be able to launch him. He said, so what's the next step? I said, I'm gonna give you two days to be able to really mow over this. I'm gonna send you some information to understand the business because I don't need your money. I don't need to set you up for failure. So we're gonna go on a 45, and here's the contract that we're gonna make. I'm gonna work with you for 45 days vicariously through Maya. And 45 days, our job is to prove to you how serious we are about your success. And after that 45 days, I need two years of your life without you ever quitting on me. So you want to know how to be able to acquire a leader and maintain a leader and then elevate a leader. So you don't have to be worried about why somebody quits after a week, after seven days, after 24 hours, why they go ghost or why they're in MIA after two or three weeks. You never created a contract with your people. That's one of the most critical things you really need to have right there. I'm going to say it again. You don't have contracts with your people that they can't go anywhere for two years. Anyone that I work with, that I personally have, a, that I work, we have a contract. <laughs> Whether you make no money or you get rich in two years, obviously my job is to get you really paid because the quicker I can get you a payday, the higher your belief is going to go. But I need to know for two years, I never have to look for you. So you got to figure out what kind of foundation you're laying with the people that you go into business with. So you guys got some people, most of them, they go ghost after a week, a month, they don't get qualified, you're chasing them. Or if they come, they're here and then life gets in the way and then they're here and they plug into all these calls. But you don't have a, you haven't employed yourself, nor are you employing them. You need to hire yourself in this business. It's a job until you get paid. It's not an organization. It's not a project. It's not something I'm in. This is my job. Well, what exactly is my job description? To help you get wealthy. To help, to help you change your family tree. Whatever your why is, that becomes my job. Don't let me show up to work and you didn't show up for your own person who's working for you and your dream. We're going to have a problem. This was my conversation with Camp. Don't let me show up for work and I can't find you. Because if you're working a job, you get sick, you still show up to work. Your, your wife gets sick, you still show up to work. The car breaks down, you still find a way to work. It snows, you find a way to work. But in this business, shit happens in your life and I got to look for you. Oh, hell to the no. And I'm working for you and your dream? You better ask somebody. We don't ever need to talk again. I will delete in a heartbeat and find somebody else who's worthy of me working for. Because that's what the upline, that's what the RBP, that's what the SVP, that's my job is to work for you. And I showed up to work when I didn't have to for your dream and you're taking it casually. Hold it, I'm bringing all the lumber and you're sitting up there on the sideline like you're the boss. <laughs> casually. 
You aren't getting any customers. You aren't even contacting people. Well, I'm thinking about contacting people. You're thinking, <laughs> what? You got to get to the heart of just life itself. That's why I said last week, who are, not who, who do you want to become? Who are you being is who you become. He said in the video, he said, if I find out what this person is doing and I'm duplicating what they're doing, then I have to get what they're getting. They all started off with, I am great. I knew I was great before anybody else th saw that I was great. Do you know that you're great before you start? Did you assign yourself the position of SVP? Did you assign yourself, the, like if I'm in the NBA, I'm assigning myself of MVP. I'm assigning myself of the most valuable player on the team to contribute to my team. I, I don't care about my points. I don't care about my stats. I care about my team winning. And in order to do that, I have to be the MVP and do more than everybody else. I, I think about this when I'm up, like, I mean, even especially in this last three months, my life has been completely disrupted. And that's just what life is. I have no complaints about it. I actually embrace every disruption that happens in my life. It forces me to grow. It forces me to become something that I didn't know I could become. It forces me to find space and time where I didn't know it existed. It forces me to work where I didn't know I can work. If I can count how many nights I've stayed up until two or three o'clock in the morning, reading when nobody else was reading, mapping stuff out when nobody else was mapping stuff out, studying when nobody else was studying, strategies within this business and understanding how to leverage my own money, being able to truly be able to put together a team to be able to instir to really look at these videos and say, okay, I'm gonna look at seven so I can save them time to find one that I know that is gonna be the most impactful to change their life when they see this video. I mean, that sounds kind of, you know, minuscule. It almost sounds like, I mean, kind of crazy, but it's like that motivational speak for every video that I would share with you. I've watched 10 before you saw it. How many did you watch? I've taken notes on at least 10 before I show anybody, uh, any, anybody on my team one, I've seen 10. Nope, that one's too long, but I love that content. That one had some really good content. Okay, that's what I need to do with my time. Okay, oh man, that's what you did to overcome that objection in your life. That's what you did to be able to understand how to be able to say no. That's just crazy. See, I'm going to share with you, like, I'm going to show one piece. There's a person who used to be, and, and Al Thomas used to, she, she's, I, I call her, a, I, I call them dinosaurs sometimes. When I say dinosaurs, that means they become extinct in my business. But she's a beast. And I still stay, uh, you know, and Dom actually brought this person up. And it's like, this is someone who became RVP. Jocelyn knows who she is who became an RVP in my business and, and went left. But I never judge. I never judge. And what I mean by that is um, everybody has to make choices in their own life. And there's some people that actually move on, but they still have amazing content. I'm going to see if I can find this for you. I want you to hear this one piece. Let me see if I can pull it up. I remember the last time I did a live. So here, I want you to hear this. It's two minutes, but I want you to hear because some things I teach just residually flow downhill and some of my most amazing leaders catch it and then expand upon it. So I want to show you this real quick. Watch this. It's two minutes. And it was amazing. This one piece and Dom, of Dom I got to give, give the credit to Dom because he brought it back to me. Can you guys see that? Okay, here we go. Check this out. Hello, hello, hello. I cannot remember the last time I did a live here on Instagram. Um, but if you are seeing this or following this, I just had some thoughts. Um, I have a lot of people reach out to me about sales, about recruiting, um, about, hi guys, nice to see you. Um, I had a lot of people asking how you get better at those things and reaching out to me, especially because I'm doing a lot of coaching right now on those subjects. But if you are in the sales industry, 
if you are in the recruiting industry, if you are in the networking industry, um, when people reach out to me, I, I almost want to go into a training course on how to connect with people because if you don't know me, you're not going to sell me. If you don't know me, you're not going to recruit me. If you don't know what motivates me, uh, let's say you're talking about your Lamborghinis and you're talking about how much money you make and you're talking about traveling the world, you're not reaching my hot buttons. It's not appealing to me. I mean, I literally want to start singing the Shania Twain, that don't impress me much song, uh, but I embarrass myself enough, so I won't start singing that. But if you don't know me, you're not going to recruit me. And that's really the message. So instead of trying to sell people, because today in, in our market, in our world, in our advertising, people do not follow companies and people do not follow products and they definitely are not sold on sales pitches. People follow people. So connect, find their hot button. And again, if you don't know what motivates someone, you're never gonna sell them. So I just wanna get back to basics and, uh, and find a way to do that. So I hope that helps. And if you're reaching out to me and you're trying to get me to invest or you're trying to get me to buy something or you're trying to recruit me, Again, if we don't know each other, uh, you're probably gonna end up with a training conversation on how to connect with people. So it is the most impressive way to not just sell or network or grow an organization, it's also the most rewarding way to live your life is just getting to know people. So let's connect. That piece right there, I could train on for the next 24 hours without missing a breath and she put it in two minutes. It's amazing how many people are trying to attract or attack. Oh, that's not me. Oh, I guess it was, I'm sorry. Um, it's amazing how many people are looking to attract and build their team, but they do not know how to connect with other people. And the reason why they don't know how to connect with other people is because they haven't connected with their own soul. You know, there's so, I mean, that's, that's really what it comes down to. I believe in generating prosperity, truly generating prosperity, right? And when I say prosperity, I'm talking about abundance in health, abundance in mentality, abundance in space and time, abundance. And I, I, I'm doing this on my feed today. I've been threatening to do it the last two days as my leaders know, <laughs> but I've been talking about it because it's just, you know, between my personal life, my business life, and everything that surrounds me, even leaving my mom this morning, here's what I have become very clear on. You got to, I call it, a, back in the day, and Al Thomas will remember this, when we, and I, I'm dating myself, but we used to call it filler stations. <laughs> Gas stations, we used to call it filler stations. Pat know what I'm talking about. We used to call it, you going to the filler station, right? And every tank, every fill station, every every tank that you fill up your 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 um, your car with represents a human being. And it isn't until you're around or you're with somebody or you yourself are empty that you're that you're empty that you realize that the fill stations you've been going to have not been filling up your car; they've been siphoning the gas out of your car and you don't really pay attention to it until you really need some gas and there's nowhere else in sight but this one filler station and the people that are closest to you and they're like sitting up there and you've been thinking and because you're so resilient because the human being the homo sapien the human being has so ridiculously i mean it's the most extraordinary thing god has ever created you have learned how to adapt and living on a quarter of a tank to eat almost an empty tank most of your life. And then when that spirit needs to be filled or that mind needs to be filled or that body needs to be filled, you realize when there's very few things around you, very few people that the ones that are the closest to you have been cycling the gas and spirit out of you. And I've seen this happen. And it's going to make me cry, but I'm trying to hold my tear. I see this happen because my cousin, I've been having ongoing conversations about my cousin and my family. And my cousin, two of my cousins got sick, COVID, whatever. My aunt passed. Al knows about that. That was just a few weeks ago. Then one cousin is like they were a trio. 
But now my cousin, it is the strongest. She has always been the strongest. I've known her, we've known each other since we were born. And she has cancer and she's fighting for her life. So she's going to these different places now and looking and using and spending all of her resources to try and live. But she spent most of her gas for the last five years sustaining her mom. Now the ones that are around her are still there, they're there in the name of, and I know some of you guys can relate to this. They're there, you have people there that are there in your life in the name of being there to support you and fill you up, not knowing that they're the ones siphoning the gas out of you. There's nothing left where she's ready to just give up because she's she's there's, and if you are not careful, and if you are not smart. And this is so applicable to our business of surrounding yourself with people who are filling you up every day. It is an ebb and flow. I use the example of the Euphrates and the Dead Sea. It's called the Dead Sea for a reason. Nothing comes out of it. See, the Euphrates is the most powerful river on the planet because there's an ebb and flow. Some of you, some of you are extraordinary givers. That's all you know how to do is give. Here's your problem. And I do call it a problem. You don't know how to receive. That's a problem. I'm not saying that nicely. You got a problem. Because it's as important to know how to receive from the right people. Because if you never look, listen, listen, Linda, listen. If you never learn how to receive from the right persons, when you're at that empty mark, the wrong persons are gonna show up as if they're receiving or, or as if they're there to give and take what little you have left. And then there's some that all they know how to do is take. You gotta be careful in your conversation. Sometimes you're subconscious and that translation of what you're putting out there of be me, me. Now I do believe there's a season as it's biblically said, there's a season for everything. There's a season to be selfish so that you can then go back and be selfless. So there are seasons that you do need to know how to be selfish, but it can't be part of your DNA. Some people only know how to take. And I've seen it in a space where somebody says they're just a taker, not understanding law of attraction is they're taking from someone else who's already a taker because you can't see the picture inside the frame. Oh, y'all don't hear me this morning. Y'all better catch up. You got to find the ones that are constantly in the ebb and flow of giving and taking and serving at the highest level to lift and lift. When you're waking up in the morning, you got to understand who do you wake up to? And see, I will not start my day without prayer. Will not. Anyone in my inner circle, we wake up, we pray. After that, I go deep into affirmations. Everyone in my internal squad, especially my projects in this business and, and, and beyond, they know they're being fed throughout the day. Not one time, not, oh, great morning, let's just start. Not good night. I hope you had a great day. I'm inside their head throughout the entire freaking day. Because it's one body. They're an extension of me. They're my left artery. They're my right lung. They're my kidney. They're my pancreas. If one piece is not working, none of my body is going to work. It's going to shut down. You need to have an internal core of individuals that are feeding and building off of each other, not you're just there to be a voyeur and to be, you have to unlay. And until you are in that self-development of truly peeling back layer after layer after layer, who are you? When I ask, you know, why should I do business with you? At what, what servitude conversation are you having? What, what compelling, everybody has an opportunity, everybody's pitching, Everybody has money on the table. What distinguishes you? See, I am very clear that if I put somebody on the phone with Mr. Al Thomas, I never have to question about whether their mind is, see, that's the squad you want. I want to give you an idea. If, same thing with Jocelyn Driscoll. If I put somebody on the phone with one of my kids, same thing with Julian, I can go down a list of people. Aaron Bird said, if, I, if you put somebody on the phone with me, in or out of my money, 
you don't have to worry about what I'm saying. When I finish with them, they're going to run back to you and beg to work with you and be honored and flattered and just that you gave them the opportunity. They are going to come back as 99% of you being educated. See, if I put them on the phone with you, they're going to come back educated. This sounds interesting. I need some more information. Yes, I think I want to, yeah, what, you know, what Magali told, yes, what, you know, what, uh, what Pat told, no. You put them in my hands. My job description when I talk to a prospect for someone else is to mentally have scrambled eggs for their brains and turn their soul inside out to make them understand how much of a blessing it is for you to even have been given the opportunity to work with Mr. Al Thomas and what he will do for you. Yeah, I know he's your brother. Yeah, I know he's your best friend. Yeah, I know he's your cousin. I know he's your colleague at work. I know y'all hang out. I know y'all went to the bar. I know y'all did this. I know you did real estate. And you don't know him the way I know him. Let me tell you, I need you to have a different perspective. I need you to see him differently. Screw the opportunity. Do you understand that he extended you a gold, literally a gold ticket from Willy Wonka, and there's only a handful of them. Now you could be a fool and pass it up if you want to, but he has access to the golden, the golden goose. You may have one golden egg, he has the damn goose. When somebody puts somebody in your hands to talk to, are they spiritually disrupted to understand I could be somewhere greater in my life if I choose to take this golden ticket. And that comes from a 24 seven day of completely empowering others through making sure you're full, that you can turn on that switch anytime. I don't care what happens in my life. You can put somebody on the phone any day of the life. I'm telling you, God forbid, I could have three kids and they all died. I can't do anything if they're dead. That switch goes on. I know, I, all I know how to do is show up the way I show up. Now there's some things that are gonna disrupt and be more disruptive than others and take you out. But it's, for champions, it's not that much. There's not much that's gonna disrupt our day from living in a champion mentality, a great mentality. I'm telling you, everything in your life is 70% your attitude and your spirit. Your money, attitude, spirit. Your health, attitude, spirit. Your time, attitude, spirit. Your problems, attitude, spirit. If you can strengthen your attitude and spirit, you can all, you can, with the help of God, you can fix everything underneath the sun. The first thing that comes to, to mind, if I went through what I call my five words when I hear God, interpret that however you want to. But the first word that comes to my mind when I hear God, well, I'm gonna give you the second most important one. The first one is love. You don't believe you're great because you haven't learned how to love yourself. If you learn how to love yourself, then you understand how great you are. I'm the greatest thing since sliced bread. There has never been a make sense to me since 1965. I'm the greatest shit you will ever see on this planet. Nobody will do what I'm gonna do on this planet because I was born to serve and create great giants that live way beyond my lifetime. That's what I was freaking born to do. And nobody can do what I do because there's nobody else. Like every other version of a human being has been taken by the way, just so you're clear. So I know this is one classic piece that just gets more valuable, not every year, every millisecond that I'm alive on this freaking planet. So the first word that comes behind God is love. Learn how to love yourself so you can have so much that pours over into loving everybody else. Now, some people you're gonna have to love from afar, just wave at them. <laughs> Okay. I didn't say love on everybody and bring everybody into your house. Some people you need to love from another country and say, keep your ass over there. Okay. <laughs> I love for you to stay over there. <laughs> the, 
the second most powerful word, I don't have time to give you a God conversation in the sense of a training of, but I am going to give you, I'm going to give you the first two that are in my book. The second most powerful word that comes from a truly a spiritual realm that I call Jesus is called faith. See, you can't have, if you don't know how to love, then you definitely aren't going to understand faith. Because an unconditional love allows you to be able to have faith and go to the next level. You can't tell me you have faith and you only talked to five people over the last week. You can't tell me you have faith and you only have 20 points. You can't tell me you have faith and you don't have 10 people on your team and you've been in the past three months. You don't have faith because there's too many people out there begging for an opportunity, wanting to be saved. You don't have to, you're spending time with all the wrong people because you haven't become the right person. As you become the right person, you're going to just stumble across. They're just going to fall in your lap. like, I've been looking for something. Not what is it? Do you have some information? Well, I love to be. A, no, they're just like a person who has anything. You offer somebody who hasn't eaten in three days some food. Hell yeah. They don't have a lot of questions. Me and Al didn't have, and it, and it has nothing to do with demographic. It has nothing to do with money. It has nothing to do with, with, with you know, where they are in life. It has nothing to do with color, creed, race, religion. I promise you, a person who got a billion dollar in their pocket and a person who has nothing in their pocket, let them both go for no food for three days. They're both going to eat whatever you give them. Because a hungry person is a hungry person. But how hungry are you? And when I say hungry, I'm, I'm famished. My mouth is parched. I'm thirsty for greatness, for success. Therefore, I have no feelings about somebody else's opinions and about what somebody else thinks about. I'm not worried about saying the right thing. I'm not worried about speaking and, and, and hoping that you like what I say. I'm not, I'm, I'm, my only job is to master an invitation and give an invitation and invite and invite and invite, go into the city, give the message. And if they don't get it, turn around so that I don't become a part of, turn into a, to a pillar of salt. I'm not that, per, I'm going from village to village, city to city. When you believe and you have faith, that's a scary person. Because you can't tell me anything. They have a deaf ear. You can't tell me no. I don't get caught. There is no emotion tied to my mission. I'm going to say that again. I have no emotion tied to my mission. My mission is to save my sister, save my daughter, save my wife, take care of my children that are unborn, take care of my mom who's getting old, take care of my house, take care of being able to spread within a community, help the homeless, help within crows, whatever my why is, that has no attachment, there's no space for emotion. I'll cry after I'm dead. They will either be tears of joy or tears of pain predicated on what I did with the time God gave me here on earth but I'll cry after I'm dead. And if I do happen to be human for a millisecond, it will be for two seconds, I'll wipe off the tear and I'll start back over again. So here's the question on Freaky Friday, fifth day of March, 15 days before our event of our national convention. What's your mission? How are you going to show up? Are you going to create three ETLs? Are you going to have 100 customer points? Do you have a specific goal of how many people you're going to have in that room on the 19th and 20th? Let's say you're just pushing restart, reset. Nobody's here to make you wrong for what you did or what you haven't done or what happened on the 4th. The, the third, the second, the first, what you didn't do in February, what you haven't done in this year. It's the 21st. Nobody's here to talk about the past because you can't do shit about it. What are you going to do now? You got 15 days. You haven't been able to get 20 people in the system qualified. Then it just makes sense that I get 20 people 
in the event on the 19th and 20 and let the system go ahead and work for me because I haven't been working the system. I've been trying to be the system and the system is failing. I keep putting the popcorn in your microwave and I end up with three kernels that might even look like they're half cracked and popped. You have not learned how to crack the code. The code is 20 IBOs qualified per month with you having a minimum of 100 points on the books. And the only way you're going to do that is to expose people to something different than what you've been doing, because whatever you've been doing, it's not working. This is a business first. Freak your title. You should have a minimum, you should have a guaranteed bar of double digits. Now, if you only have 10 there on the 20, if nobody's going to be mad at you, it's a great start. But anything less than double digits, and that's less, and you don't have that written down as a goal. This is much more of a deeper conversation. I wish I had time to really do a full day training with you guys, but I'm going to leave you with, what are you going to do with the rest of this month? Starting with the 20th, the 19th and 20th with our, have you, have you even registered? Do you even know what, have you registered? Now, how many people have you registered? Have you made everybody on your team register? Do you have three? Some of you are blessed enough to have four or five people. And do you have 10? Then you should have a goal of 30. If you got 20, you should have a goal of 40. If you got it, if you got 40, you should have a goal of 80. You should be, whatever it is, you should be doubling up whatever it is. That's your first, that's your only goal. Because if you haven't gotten it, if last week you got a check and you didn't get a comma in it, <laughs> then you might want to push reset. And it's okay to push reset every day until you figure out how to set, until you push the right button, because <laughs> it really is okay to keep pushing reset every single day. I'm going to leave you with this. Learn how to rearrange your thought process so that you rearrange your life. You're going to have to learn how to rearrange your thought process because you keep doing the same shit. You keep thinking the same way. You keep doing the same things and you keep showing up the same way. You know, I'm looking, I'm like, how many people on here, if you just had on Friday, or Mr. Al Thomas is so grateful. He's, I mean, I mean, grateful. He's so gracious. You know, you guys should be grateful. He's so gracious. I, I don't know. My team knows. I cut that, I cut my call down to once a week. I'm, I'm ready to cut that out. I don't want to talk to nobody. He's nice. He's got three, four times a week. Screw that. Y'all ain't doing shit with it. This shit should be at 800 people on this call. I'm not doing it. Thank Jocelyn. Thank Al. Thank the rest of SVPs. Y'all ain't going to go to work. I have no reason to have a call that's not going to grow. I have no reason to do it. I'll be damned. My time is too valuable. I got too many other things that I got to do with my time. I know how to take $10 and turn it into a thousand. I know how to take a thousand, turn it into a hundred thousand. I know how to take a hundred thousand, turn it into a million. Then to drag somebody through the mud and work harder for them than they're going to work for their own dreams. So I just keep cutting the branch, cutting the branch, cutting the branch till I get down to the nubs. Right now I'm at about six or seven nuts, nuts and I, I know what I'm doing with those nubs. Now it's on me. I'll grow those nubs and then build an orchard out of it and make everybody else watch. <laughs> and then maybe they'll pay attention as I feed them off of this orchard because I'm building a freaking orchard. It's not like I quit and I, I, I didn't quit on my people. I show up when they show up. Be clear about that. I just have no, no patience to do a call in a, cons in, in, in a construct system where you just keep showing up and you have nobody else on the call but you. I, we can do a Zoom. I, I'll do a coffee with you. Shit, I'll meet you somewhere. I can go anywhere I want. <laughs> just send me a text. I'll give it to one of my assistants and we can get on the call and we can talk. But I don't need to keep showing up and giving up hours and hours for it not to grow. So this is a challenge to each one of you individually that are so blessed to have this type of leadership and support to grow. I like to get on just one day. I, I mean, just one day and somebody say, I got 10 guests on here. We've been doing this for the last year, just one day. I will team up with Al and, and, and all the rest of the leaders on here and we will take that one person as 10 and we'll grow it to hundred ourselves. We're looking for one example of somebody comes on here with 10 guests. and not your existing team <laughs> that has been dead with you for a year. <laughs> and
And I don't say that to be, to, to be, you know, beat you up. I say that to be, to wake you up. I say it out of love. I say it out of the depth of love. Cause if I didn't love you, I wouldn't say shit. <laughs> Does this make sense? Excellent. Absolutely. I am complete, Mr. Al Thomas. Unless anybody got questions for me, I'm, I don't think they would right. have this call, but <laughs> got you, Tosh. I love it, sir. I, you know, it's like you tell your kid, don't touch the stove, and they'll touch it, and then somebody else say, don't touch it, and they won't touch it. But you know what? I, I thank God that we're on the same frequencies about getting on here and bringing new people on, because I have been, I'm ready to fall on my face about it and cut back, because it's like you said, because I was praying the other day about it, because it just saddens me, and, and you and I are on the same frequencies. How do you get on here and not bring anybody? I, I don't, I don't, I don't. Anyway, everybody, let's just sit silent for 15 seconds and let what Mr. Nelson say sink in. Yeah, like you said, forget your title. You too. Let's sink in. I want you guys to be invigorated for the day. I don't want you starting the day out as a downer. I want to know that you guys are excited about it. Hopefully somebody's awake. This is coffee. Are you guys okay? Because I can leave you on a high, but if you just deflate yourself, I mean, I prefer to be put at ground zero and know what I'm building from. And I'd also like to iterate, peel back your onion. That's what we started with. Mr. We peel back your onion. Peel back the BS. Pull, pull back... Yeah, take the mask off and be real with yourself. Pull it back. When was the last time? Like you said, what did you do in January? What did you do in February? What have you done five days into March? And are you registered for the international on the 20th of March? Pull it back. Mr. Nelson, we thank you guys now. Tell you what, we want to end on a high note. So let's show Mr. Nelson some love and be honest with yourself. Be honest with yourself. Let's show Mr. Nelson some love. Put it in the chat. Put it in the chat. Put it in the chat. You know, this is heartfelt love. This is love. Like you said, the, the outside of God, the first is love. The second is faith. So have the faith to love yourself. And not only have, have the faith to go out and do something different to stretch yourself today. Remember, it's Friday. Follow up Friday at 6 o'clock with all the RDs on here. But we want to thank Mr. Nelson. Put in the love. Come on, show some love. Come on, show. What did this mean to you, this conversation, this fireside chat? What did it, Sam Foster? I know you're on fire. <laughs> Put in the chat, put in the chat. I know some of you might've hurt you a little bit, but put in the chat, it's okay. It's okay, it's okay. <laughs> Tough love never hurt. Tough love makes you stronger. Tough love builds character. Character, <laughs> the Marines, the <laughs> Army, the Navy. The the question, Build character. What's happening, guys? Can we can we ask the question to uh, Mr. Nelson? Of course. Absolutely. Right on, right on. By the way, I am gonna be on the uh, happy hour at six o'clock for people before, before I'm gonna answer this one question, and then for anybody, Yay! Else, you know, yeah, questions. I feel like it's a very powerful question too. Okay, <laughs> so so that this doesn't go okay. for another thirty minutes, I answer this one, and then everybody else, I will be on happy hour at six. Right on, right awesome. on. Appreciate the opportunity. Hey, go right All ahead. Right, so, my question for you, Mister Nelson, what motivates you the most when you feel like quitting? <sighs> Ooh, that's a good um, question. You know what? I, I played a piece for my team the other day. In my DNA, I just don't know how to quit. Um, if, if you look, I, I, I don't, I don't, I, 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 I get chills thinking about it. I hate something winning over me that I had the power to win at. I be, I, I, I'm just, I'm not. I, I don't know if it's, if it's, uh, I don't know what it is. I know Alice the same way. It's, it, it really is. Um, I know Alice the same way. I just don't know how, how it's instilled in certain people. I get more angry and not accomplishing what I set out to do. The Amen. more, the more adversity I get, the more, the more, and, and, and I, I was sharing with my team the other day, I have fallen off. I will take a break. I will stop. But I don't know how to. I don't know. I don't know how to. I don't have. I. I don't have an IQ in me. I don't have an I quit level in me. So amen. I. I, I you know, it, it becomes personal to me. You know what I'm saying? I don't know how to be stagnant either. So it's like every day something has to change. I don't mind failing. You know, I have this vision. Before I was doing this call, I know what my vision was. 
and it's just like SVP. And at some point, I'll sh well, you'll see it because <laughs> it's going to show up. My theory, just to get behind this, like if you can help one person go, RD, why can't you help seven at the same time? If you can help someone go RBP, if you can go RBP, why can't you help seven people go RBP at the same time? If you can go SVP, why can't you help seven people go SVP at the same time? Is that making any, are you following me on that so far? So I have a personal vendetta in myself and in the journey of learning why this, now I'm using conservative numbers because I don't want to scare you guys, but in my head, the thing is, I know how to break an ETL. I know how to break an RD. I know how to break an RBP. I even know how to break an SVP. But why can't you do it in a way? It, it, there's, a, there's a system called a wave that is, you can't find it. You'd have to learn. I'm, I'm sure Mr. Al Thomas has heard of it. There's only people that are experts in the industry that understand a, it's a system called a wave theory. And in that wave theory, you should, that's when massive momentum is, is amounted. And you should be able to break X amount of people within a certain period of time. And I haven't mastered that wave theory yet. And it pisses me off because I've been a part of two to three of them. And so in the journey of learning for myself, it's been the first phase of learning for myself was I figured out I wasn't who I needed to be. That pissed me off. Then I figured out I was working with the wrong people, hoping buying their conversation and their hope but then when I ask them to do something, they say, I do my best. Best isn't good enough. That should, when somebody's life is on the line, your best, I'm sorry, I did my best. I tried to save your mom. It's not good enough for me. So when you have something that's as simple as this of getting a hundred customers and all you have to do is talk to 300. I, I, I'm not scared of, of all I need. What do I need to do to complete what I need to do? Give me what I need to do. I will do it. I, I don't, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I don't need to figure shit out. Just tell me what I need to do and I'll do it. If I got to go outside on the street and talk to a hundred people before, talk to a hundred people a day for a year and you'll by default get to SVP. I will go and walk. I'll start at 5 in the morning, finish by five, by literally, you know, seven, eight o'clock. And I, I'll talk Look, are you open to making some money? I just threw up a rock. First person, you just won the lottery. Whatever I got to do to talk to 100 people, I have no, I, what are you going to say to them? Do you want to change your life? I don't give a freak what you say. People think too much instead of going to work. All I need to know is what I need to do. Give me those people who stop thinking and get caught up in their feelings and will walk outside their house and knock on a knock on the doors. Look, you know what? I'm building a, a a neighborhood project of how to be able to lower everybody's bills. Here's my card. Just let me know if you like to do that. People are just thinking too much. I'll do whatever the freak I need to do. Give me a by any means necessary individual. Everybody else is like I'm trying to find myself. Well, I'm I'm, I'm I'm sitting. I don't got time for that. I don't. My patience is too thin right now. I just I just don't have it. You know, I got a machete. I, I mean. I'm scared to talk to most of my team. That's why I'm cutting my calls back because I know how low my patience is. And I will make a person quit in a heartbeat. I, I will tell a person exactly, you aren't shit. You are never going to be shit because you chose not to be shit. It's okay. But I'm still going to love you for just the shit that you are. <laughs> and that's not the ACN way. <laughs> so I have to, uh, I'm just letting you guys know I'm in a certain space that I have to, you got to know yourself. You know what I'm saying? So I got to know when to pull back because my teeth are so sharp. So I actually have to, with my projects even, explain what's expected. And so they are very clear where I am out of love and make sure you can handle it. Because if you can't handle it, just know what's coming because you asked for this. Mr. Nelson? Yep. Hey, quick question. You said something that was really important um, about how you have an awareness and you know sometimes you need to take a step back because you have sharp teeth. Okay. Uh, what would you say if the conversation is sharp and it's shredding? And you, we're expected to get a brand new baby on or people that aren't even guests. And, and they don't know the difference and they're feeling ripped apart when the conversation is a leadership conversation and there's no awareness in the fact that new people are on. 
Okay, rewind. Say it one more time. <laughs> All right. So this is important because I want to get 20 new people on. Got you. But if the, but if the and I've done it, but if the but I've had I've lost people because if I have a if I know the difference between a leadership conversation, right. but if we want to get new people on and the conversation is always pointed to the person that's not doing anything, number right. one, you would have lost me. Because right. I would think everyone's not doing anything. I don't want to be a part of a sorry, sorry organization. Exactly. Number two, if they're weak, you're going to lose them because now they're like, oh, crap. I'm not right. doing anything. And they're too, they're, they don't have the skin yet. Right. So what do you say and how do we remedy that? Because I want to put 100 on next Understood. week, but I don't want that to happen. Understood. So here's, here's, here's caution to the wind for every new person. If you're going to have new people on and you're going to be that leader that Julian is talking about, Mr. Lewis is talking about, to bring 10 or more on, you need to let the leader know. You need to let Mr. Julian Lewis know, let Mr. Al Thomas know, let Jocelyn, let myself, let somebody know, I got 10 brand new people getting on the call. And then we will tailor it. But I'm looking at the numbers and I know nobody had 10 new people on today. But if I know... And I'm telling somebody, so these conversations, this, this beat up conversation, number one, if you're weak, you shouldn't be on a leadership call. You shouldn't even say you want to be a leader. Let's be clear about that. Now, everybody starts off, and let me, let me, let me, let me break that down. It's okay to be weak. It's not okay to aspire to be strong. So if you know that you're weak and you aspire to be strong, we have a space in which we will build you, okay? But if you know you're weak and you choose not to be strong, I don't know what to tell you, okay? So we don't wanna lose anybody. I will fight for you when you won't fight for yourself so long as I know that you're wanting to win. And I think I speak for every leader on here. Now, in regards to the new people that are coming on, you need to caution us before you put that many new people on because I can go through, as I do, before I start every call, I look at every face that's on here and every name that's on here. I know 99% of the people that are on here, so I already knew there was no new people on here. I will never go in like that until I canvass the area. 99% of the people are on here, I know every name and face that's on this on, in, in here. I did that before I go in. I do that before I start every time. That's why I always ask Jay or I ask Mr. Al Thomas, give me an extra three to five minutes because I want to make sure that my conversation before I go in, I, I've taken inventory of what's in there. But if I know that somebody's going to bring, if any one of you wants to go to work, like Mr. Tom, like Mr. Lewis saying, we will tell her the conversation in it, obviously a much more uplifting, much more inspiring, much more powerful call with the tools necessary geared for a new person and can be used by a seasoned person. I just need to know that beforehand. And, and, and just like, I mean, I've seen where um, Sam and so many other people, I mean, that, that work with Mr. Al Thomas, as well as you, Julian, that they are doing great work. And Mr. Al Thomas gives me a call. He's like, this person, he's like, this is what I did to be uncomfortable. This is what a couple of my other people are doing to be uncomfortable. So those people I already know are resilient, aren't taking it to heart. And we communicate. So us as leaders, it's like, if he, all, you got, all we got to do is know beforehand, this is, what the, this is the direction. This is the navigation of where we are. Thank so, you, sir. Definitely. I appreciate that. Definitely. I would love, I, because I know how to, I, I think we all do. We know how to, I know how to structure a conversation to eliminate 85 people on the call and talk to just the 10 on the call. I would love to do that. I would get more of a high of talking to just the 10 on the call and the rest of you guys sitting in the stands being a boy or duplicating whoever it is was the one person that brought the 10 people on the call than talking to the 85 people. This is just straight black coffee, no cream, no sugar to wake some people up because of what I saw as far as the ingredients when I came on. Getting to the core of what we must do to shift our attitudes. And it starts with how we talk to ourselves. What do you wake up with? I woke up this morning knowing I was great. I woke up this morning knowing I have to do something extraordinary. Knowing that the people that are in my inner circle that, that fill my life, and my heart that I got to do something to fill their tank. That I mean, that's just what comes to my mind immediately. 
right, is how do I feel my girl's tank? How do I feel my mom's tank? How do I feel my son's tank? My sister just, go, how do I feel my team's tank? How do I, I, I want I want to feel tanks that I know once I feel them, when I'm on empty, they can feel mine back. <laughs> so my caution to the wind is, if you feel empty, if you feel alone, then you got to take note of the people that are surrounding you. And you have to take note of the conversations you're letting inside of your head. That was the ultimate message. It just took on a life form of a whole lot more as we evolved. But hopefully that helped for anyone who wants to go balls to the wall, forgive me, ladies, and put 10, 20, 30 new people on a call. And you would like to see those 10, 20, 30 people turn into 300. Just let me or Mr. Al Thomas know. I, I know how to I know how to take some gasoline and pour it on some new people and make them and, and empower them. That's my favorite conversation. That's why I'm beating you guys up. I want some new people. <laughs> I want some new blood. I'm a vampire. I'm thirsty. You guys are killing me. <laughs> I'm complete. <laughs> Thank you, Jay. I'll be on. I'll see you guys at happy hour. God bless. I love you guys.